Hello everybody, this is a stocky here with just a really quick video. Um, I guess I'll put this in the category of being a Dwarf Fortress tutorial. Uh, basically what I wanted to do is something I haven't touched on yet is this extra window that pops open called DF Hack whenever you basically uh, open up Dwarf Fortress with a lazy noob pack. And basically what this does is it allows you to do a lot of uh, memory hacks and different other kinds of memory things that allow you to work stuff out. Now I've just created a pocket world in the background here and what I thought I would do is just really quickly demo to you one of the really useful tools that DF Hack has. Um, so basically you can see as I move the cursor around everything kind of works normally. You can see that the extra large map is the same size as the normal map. What I will just do is do a really quick find and just see if I can find an area that meets my normal requirements. I think the answer is going to be no, but we'll do the search anyway and see what happens. In fact, I am incorrect. It has found a number of little sites in this pocket world. So let's browse the results. Okay, so we can see this particular area here, uh, which is this 4x4 area just here. It has uh, only one single biome which is not ideal but that one biome is untamed wilds, heavily forested, it is warm there's clay, there's very deep soil, there's shallow metals, there's deep metals and there's flux stone. When you want to embark though you really want to make sure that at least one of the metals you have is iron and from this all you can tell is there's lots of metal so you have a very good chance but you have no idea what you're actually getting. Now this is where DF Hack comes in. Now this is I guess almost a spoiler, but if you type P-R-O-S-P-E-C-T space all and then press enter, it gives you a list and it says, warning, the above data is only a very rough approximate. Um, basically the wiki page says if it is showing up as being here, there's like a 90% chance it will be there, but these values here, which are meant to be the amount of that particular thing you have, can be off by plus or minus 30%. In some cases, it'll just be totally wrong. But now if we kind of work our way up, you can see that starting at the top, these are going to be the different layers that you have. So granite, rhyolite, diorite, obsidian, quartzite, gabbro, and these here are the altitudes where you should find that layer. So at zero, we should have tan sand, then at minus one, we should start to get fire clay, then clay loom, then silt clay, then minus 4 to minus 6 is basalt, then phyllite, then schist, then marble, then gabbro, then quartzite, then obsidian, then diorite, then rhyolite, then granite. All the way down to minus 53, and then from that point, there should be no more levels, or at least no more layered materials. And then when we go down, which is the next one, which is the most important, you can see that we will have galena, and galena is uh, lead and silver. So basically for every bar you smelt, you get uh, four lead and about two silver. It, that number varies. You can sometimes get two, sometimes get one, sometimes get three. There's also native gold, hematite, native copper, uh, tetrahedrite. I don't know what tetrahedrite is. It sounds cool though, but I don't know what it is. And then native aluminum or alumin. Yeah, aluminum. That's the American spelling. In Australia we call it aluminium, but we actually spell it different. So that spelling there is aluminium, but I don't like the way it's said. You can also see that there are a number of different uh, gems that are available, plus a bunch of other different kinds of uh, stones that show up in stone veins. And so you can see that with the metals in particular, uh, the shallow metals you're going to find are aluminium, tetrahedrite and copper. And then the deeper metals you're going to find are galena, gold, and hematite, which is an ore of iron. So this really is a pretty good area. You're going to get silver, which is excellent for war hammers. You're going to get iron. You're going to get copper, which you can use to make some early things because it's right near the surface. You've got aluminium, which is incredibly valuable. Um, you've got lead that you can just make crafts out of, you know, you've got a, a really good mix of different things there. You've also got a really good obsidian layer, which is excellent in terms of the value of a stone. So, you know, this would be a great place to actually set off. So that's, I guess that's really what I wanted to show you guys here, that if you're 
wanting to start a good fortress, I mean you can pick everything that you want here, but it's still really hard to know what you have. So that's where that little DF hack utility can come in. Because if I pick another place, um, let's say I went here, and it says, uh, there we go, shallow metals, deep metals, and flux stone in that area. This time if I get the DF hack utility and do the same thing again, this time you will see that uh, the ores are galena, saffrolite, tetrahedrite, malachite, and native gold. So I'm pretty sure tetrahedrite is not an ore of iron. Uh, malachite is not. Saffrolite is not. Galena is not. Native gold's not. So there's the potential that this area here has lots and lots of metals, but no iron. And you can also see if you look through here, it also doesn't have an obsidian layer. So those two things are things that on the face of it you wouldn't even know was different but once you actually look into it, it was going to make that first place a much better embark location than the second so like I said just wanted this to be a really quick video just to show you guys the differences in some of the areas that you can get and how to, to use that utility to really find the best embark if you're looking at starting a serious fortress so thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this short episode A stocky out